Hey, hey, my name is Tim Bryce. I'm one of the teachers here at Michico on 46th Street in Times Square, New York City. I've been teaching here over 25 years, and uh, I play saxophone, play flute, clarinet, bassoon, jazz bassoon. I also play Nada Swarm, which is an Indian double reed instrument. When I was in eighth grade, I wanted to play the saxophone and what happened is my mother took me to a music store and uh, we rented a horn and I found a teacher and I started studying. And it was music all around, so you know, I had listened to John Handy, great jazz saxophone player on the Bell Telephone Hour, and I heard him playing and I saw other things that were around that inspired me as a young guy. I didn't even know who I was listening to, but it drew me in. When I was in high school, I was very fortunate that uh, I had a really good uh, set of teachers uh, in Reading, Pennsylvania, where I lived and grew up. The area was very inspiring, and you could see the level of, of what you wanted to get to, other than just, you know, playing very well in high school. I got to a point, as I was going through school, I used to see ads in Downbeat Magazine for Berkeley School of Music, that's what it was called then. Little did I know the uh, course of events that would follow through life with that instrument. And uh, around 1969, after I graduated from high school, I started my first semester at Berkeley. In 1973, I graduated from Berkeley and I moved to the Bronx. I was always doing things in Boston, playing gigs, jam sessions. Once I got situated in the Bronx, that was great, and when I was home, I would go to sessions. In the neighborhood I lived in, the great tuba player, Ray Draper, who had recorded with Coltrane and Jack McLean and tons of people, we would go to sessions together and do things. Times were good, sometimes times weren't good, that's in any profession. In that era, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, and it was something I, I got experience from. I started teaching, coincidentally, when one of the bands I was playing with, Harry James, the leader was on his way out. He was dying, and uh, he was a great leader to work for. And uh, what had happened is the band was coming to an end, so I moved back to Pennsylvania. I started um, playing some odd gigs around Pennsylvania and I met a school teacher who said, do you teach? And at that particular point, I was sort of hesitant to say, yeah, but what had happened is I was teaching some students on the same street that I lived and she was very adamant about how far these students got because that I would sit and play with them and I'm, okay, so they're fifth graders. So I started teaching and all of a sudden I ended up with like maybe 60 or 70 students in a week. And as time went on, you know, I started writing for a saxophone magazine, started doing that, and I met Roberto through doing an article on him. And as time went, he said, you know, you should come into New York and teach, teach one day a week. And all of a sudden, that one day led to two days. And two days led to every Friday and every other Saturday. My favorite part about being a teacher, no matter what level or what the person's agenda and goals are, is actually communicating and helping somebody get to the next level that they're at. Whether it's a young student with a clarinet who's only been playing a few weeks, or somebody coming to me to learn transcriptions and to rip apart Sonny Rollins solos and talk about what's going on. I like that rapport of offering advice, getting into something with somebody. As I'm doing that and helping them, I'm also learning something myself. There's a certain agenda that is lost when somebody tries to do something on their own because the joy of education is a relationship between 
student, teacher, master, pupil. And also listening to somebody get better right in front of your own face. What more could you ask for? One thing I like about it is, you know, I see people that are friends of mine when I come here. It's a family. And uh, Roberto fosters that. He propagates that. I like to teach and the thing about what makes it best is every one of my students is different. For the one person that we're working on figuring out why Hank Mobley sounds so great, I have another student who has another aspect of why Hank Mobley sounds so great. And this goes on and on and that could apply to any great jazz master. I've taught here in this studio easily 25 years, maybe a little bit more, and uh, I love what I do. You can contact me through timpricejazz at aol.com. timpricejazz at aol.com. You can also, if you're serious and you want to get in touch with me right away, you can call or text me at 610-207-1815. I'm here for you.